we on? Yeah. Guys, welcome to episode 85 of Roll with the Fox Antivirus Edition. It's a mouthful. So guys, uh, today what we're going to do is, I figured, let's look at some unorthodox escapes from bottom of cross side. All right. Um, and basically, they involved, uh, all of them involve a threat of submission on the top guy. Okay. So again, let's look at it uh, from two different perspectives. You know, people don't, if you lose the submission, but the guy kind of backs away because he feels that threat, you did your jo job well. If you can regard, that's a, that's a good thing. Okay. So don't look at it again. Yeah, it's great to just be on the bottom cross side, submit somebody. But sometimes it doesn't happen. And sometimes you just basically get the, uh, get the guy to, he feels it backs off and that's cool. Just regard. All right. So let's look at, um, let me see, what, what's the best angle? here all right so um, a lot of times what I'm trying to do is get his get his arm between my legs all right a lot of times you know when we try to escape I'm trying to turn to him but he's driving to, for me to turn away all right so as he's driving to turn turn me away you could see how his arm I move it with with my hips and my leg. So now what I'm looking to do is put his arm between my legs. Okay. So once I have this guys, I'm going for a um, inverted triangle right now. The angle, if I'm facing away from him, I don't know if you remember, there is two styles of inverted triangle. We call them for lack of better term, Braulio style and Fox style. My style is more if I'm turning to him. Braulio, this is a perfect time, all right? So what we're going to do is, don't move your head, I'll move it. So I have to go under, okay? I have to go under his head, lock it up. I will hold on to this arm, it's, it's useful. And notice that I have it with a Gatame thread on this side as well. The reason for this is I don't want him to, once I start to get this going, I don't want him to bust out. And now, you just squeeze. Right. So let's look at the setup again. Guys, understand that this will not necessarily work for you. Yeah, it's a beautiful, it's a thing of beauty. You're in a crappy position and you submit the guy. Do not expect this to happen every time, especially with against skilled guys. But a lot of times a threat of submission will make the guy back off. And that's enough for me to regard. You know, again, that is your ultimate goal is to regard if 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 you can get the submission. So if, if he lets me turn to him, but a lot of times the guys drive and turn you away. What I'll do is move my, move my leg. Now, usually, no, I will try to go, hold on to it. I may actually, yeah, I may threaten. We, we're going to come back to this, guys. Now I have the leg. We start to come back. He starts to withdraw a little bit. So if his head is down, guys, I need to push it down towards towards my hips, bring my leg over, and now, guys, I lock up. I will try to hold on to this if I can. If I can't, that's okay. And I just, guys, I just squeeze. All right. So one more time. Should we do it from the other angle? Other side? And I think it's good. That's yeah, good. I want, change. I want him to reps on the other side, too. <laughs> So again, I use my leg, bring it over, lock up, and squeeze. All right, one more time. So as he, if I can turn to him, but a lot of times the guy's got a good drive. I may... I'm gonna to look to help with this leg if I can. He's in my trap now. Bring the leg over. Now I go back to grabbing his arm. And now I squeeze. Yeah, baby. Do you guys have any questions on this so far? We have Michael for seat asking if, uh, will we make it to episode 100? 
I hope not. But um, we actually talked about this, guys. Um, the situation in, uh, in New Jersey is, is moving. Unfortunately, I, I don't consider my school a gym. I consider it a school. But I think in people's minds and, and sort of uh, from a regulatory standpoint, we classify it as gyms. There is no date for uh, reopening gyms yet. However, my plan is to basically see in the next week or so if there is a date. If there is no date, I plan to eventually take matters into my own hands. You know, where we have to st sort of start to do it on a, in a responsible way. But um, I think that if we make it to episode 100, that'll be it. I hope we finish before that. We got 14 left. What is it, 6, 85, 86? 85. 85. So we got, ma I think maximum 15. It would be a nice number. Well, I may finish it at 99, though. But I'd rather just stop it at 93 or whatever the number may be, 94, whatever it is. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll play by ear. Um, yeah, I, uh, you know, we're still going to do this, but, you know, obviously we're not going to do this on a daily basis because I, I have other things to do, too. <laughs> once, especially once the school reopens, I have a lot of things to do. So uh, we still will continue this, but not on a daily basis. What else we got, Mike? Dave Jocelyn is asking, can you get an Urigatami as a secondary submission on the other arm? It's going to be very difficult. Can you guys tell me why? That... Let's let's do it again just so you guys see. So I'm not gonna squeeze. Michael Frizzi says not enough space. Yeah, there's no breaking there's no breaking room. Also Basically, guys, if you're gonna if you're gonna finish an urigatami, you generally need to have your feet on the, at least one foot on the hips. If you don't have at least one foot on the hips, chances are it's gonna fail. But that grip also, but that grip keeps him from busting out. Because once I get to that point, guys, uh, understand that when you're on the bottom cross side, you want the guy away from you, not on top of you. But once I set things up, you know, to the point where I got to. I no longer want to want him to 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 bust out to to escape. So initially, I kind of keep try to push. You know, that's that's one of the uh, beginners' mistakes. A lot of times when they get on the bottom, they kind of like holding on to the guy. Um, you know, if you're in danger of being hit, yeah, that's that's a viable strategy. But from a jiu-jitsu perspective, you're basically keeping him where he wants to be. I want him away from me. I want space. Uh, but once I set up all these little steps. Now I don't want him to go away. I want him to stay exactly where he is. Kanai Kiyoshi is asking, if the opponent's head is very tight and close to the head over the chest, are you going to pursue the same technique? Uh, that's a good question. It's, it's, it's kind of difficult if, if his head is really tight. So I can kind of move. You know? So once... The, the hardest part is to trap the arm. Right. I'm sort of right now, if he connects, connect, connect hard. If he connects hard and I realize this, if, if I, if I think it's going to happen, I can try, I can try. So I'm pushing, but I'm trying to get my legs. This is not going to happen. What I'll do now, my arm is in danger, but I have a brief uh, chance to do something about it. I'll drop my left elbow and I'm going to arch hard. As I'm marching hard, I'm going to jam my leg in and so again, you have to string a few things together. So that is a possibility. If his head, again, understand that your best chance of setting anything up is in speak French now <laughs> transitions guys because once he uh, uh, you see that once he sort of starts to set up all the little elements then it's a lot harder for me to set it up but there's other things you could do 
So, you know, do you understand? Like you wind up in a situation, you have to take a quick stock, quick sort of assessment of what you have and then run with it. So if his head is really tight, so if it's really, this time he's so far, so high up on my shoulders, what I'm gonna do is, my hips, I, I can bump them. So what I do is instead of bump my hips, I arch and I now go into an arm lock. Not gonna happen. What are you tapping? I want you to break my arm. Oh, is he going to? Oh. Now, yank your arm out. So again, I have the arm lock, but there is a follow-up. Guys, there's a follow-up. There's a, there's a sequence to almost anything. It's just you need to have big enough toolbox, but also understand how to string things together. So if there's one theme in this whole series that we keep talking about is work on your combinations, work on your sequencing, okay? I know some of you guys, well, probably a lot of you guys don't have the same, you know, uh, same number of years or anywhere near that uh, on the mats that I have, but you can sequence things that are s simpler and, and sort of more suited to your game you know, if you're a high-level guy, you can se sequence things or, you know, combine things that make more sense towards your game. So it's, it's not necessarily like this is you do one, two, three. You don't paint by numbers, one, two, three, four. It's what, you, what your sort of game is, and, and you can sort of start to s pay attention to what your training partners are doing in response to your attacks or response to your defenses. And there's a logical answer as to what you should be following up with. Okay. So let's move on, guys. So let's look at the scenario where I start to, I control his, his, his hand. And he's not, he's not letting me. I cannot, so I did not get, if I can push his head down, I'm going to try and land. But in this case, I didn't. Guys, if you do this, be very, very slow. Tap. So this is a key lock, Americana, using my own leg. Guys, do not slap this on. <laughs> if he does that, I, I go back into the triangle. But, so if I have this, guys, do not kind of like go hard. From here, guys, very, very slow. Tap. Okay, very slow, guys, because this, if you do this fast, you will pop somebody's shoulder. Let's look at it from the other side. So again, if my head is turned away, what I'm gonna try to do is, 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 is get a hold of his arm. Don't forget, guys, if I cannot, don't let me get a grip on this arm. If he knows, he's not gonna let me get a grip on the arm. But by doing so, he's giving me a, a, he's giving me space to get my leg in. Again, guys, the backup plan on any one of these is guard recovery. Oh yeah, I got this. <laughs> tap tap tap. Now, if he swims, and now we have we have the choke. All right. So most of these, when you're looking away, they lead into Braulio style inverted triangle. Now, what would lead to a uh, fox style triangle, for lack of a better word? Guys, I'm not claiming I invented it. I'm sure somebody else was doing it before. I just don't see a lot of people using it. Well, so it's not a lack of credit. <laughs> it is, because I can't think of 
<laughs> well, what, what else would we call? We can just process and verify. So, if I can turn to him, all right? Now, so if I can turn to him, a lot of times the guy loses control over that. So, as I'm threatening to put my, uh, put my leg back in, you know? Now, as it's happening, normally I would weave my hand in front so I can put him back in guard. But this time, I have an opportunity. So, I want to kind of keep him where he is, all right? So what I'm gonna do is push his arm away and bring my leg over. When I do, I'm gonna I'm gonna pin. Lock it up. So now we have the other kind of inverted triangle. The fox inverted triangle. <laughs> so again, this one works. Well, if, if I can turn, and I threaten to regard, all right? A lot of times he's still trying to control my hips with his hand, because from here, it's, it's no longer effective. It's, it's an easy regard, all right? So he ret retracts his elbow, that's fine. What I'm gonna try to do is if I can, if you don't necessarily have to, guys, you just pin. Now, I put my weight on his torso, Let's look at it from the other side. So again, this time I can turn to, towards him and I So he allowed me, he's more concerned, more of his weight, more of his attention is on my hips as opposed to my neck. So I'm, I can turn to him. Notice that he, as, as I'm going in, he keeps his hand on my hip, all right? So he stays with me. When I bring the leg over, that collapses his base. He has no choice but to post, all right? Do we have any questions on this so far, Mike? While we're waiting for the questions, we have check-ins from Lithuania. We also have Canada, Japan, Wisconsin, Venezuela, Mississauga. You know where that is? Mm, do you know where it is? I do know where it is. <laughs> No, no, no. There it Ontario. is. Uh, <laughs> yes, I have Vernon, New Jersey. So you, sp <laughs> you specify. <laughs> <laughs> you got to thank him. <laughs> and one question. We have a few questions. Uh, Lost appears asking. I have a question for you guys. What happened to our Antarctica connection from via, via Serbia? I, I believe they're already training in full. So he can't join alive now. Uh, yeah. Anyways, go ahead. And we have a lots of peer who is saying, uh, so it's not a speed based move, but a controlled move. Correct. But you know, timing is important because you know I need to stay ahead of him. Uh, uh, you know, once I stay a half a step, a step ahead of him, I kind of just keep the attack until I I shut everything down. So it is not necessarily a speed, but you have to act. Because all these opportunities, guys, when, it, when you escape bottom of cross side, everything is contingent upon where his hands are placed, where his body is placed. When he changes, my escape changes too. So if you wait for, if you're constantly resetting, I'm resetting my hips, I'm resetting my grips. Hip bumps. So... <laughs> Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I, I thought it was going to be a book of poetry, but it might be an album. So when you, uh, when the guy on top resets, so the point is you have to get going.
before he resets. Let him react to you rather than you reacting to him. If you're letting the guy constantly reset, you as soon as he resets, you have to reset your things. So you're chasing him. Not in a good way. You're chasing his movement. It's good to chase him where he's, he's running away from you. But this time he's on top. He's just kind of making your escapes. So anytime the guy on top changes, you're down. So this is different escape. This is different escape. This is different escape. This is different escape. So I don't know if you, you know, when you see there is two narrated roles between me and Arika. Uh, one gi and one no gi. So for those of you who keep asking for it, guys, it's there. I know there's a lot of a lot of stuff where, like I said, between the 85 episodes and best of the week and 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 the narrated roles, we're close to 90 videos just in this playlist alone. Um, so uh, it's it's there. But if if you notice that when I get on top, I have to keep switching my arms because if I don't, he's gonna get his grips and he's gonna go. So I keep switching my arms until I get something isolated, something worthwhile that I can run away with. Okay, does that make sense? I'm down to 10 minutes, okay. And Retardus is asking. I thought you were gonna be like, yeah, man, good <laughs> answer. <laughs> Retardus is asking, how to try, uh, can you explain how to try to turn your hips from close guard on bottom when your opponent is posting his head on your chest and preventing your movement, like an MMA scenario and double bicep control. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And let's go to one more unorthodox escape from um, bottom cross side before we go to that question. So, so this time I want his weight on my shoulders. If it's on my hips, I can. Okay, I want him on, on my shoulders. So again, I need to get going. Guys, anytime you're on bottom cross side, have your feet close. Don't, don't be out here. Okay? I want my feet close all the time. I don't know exactly where I'm, well, I do know, but it doesn't matter. Even if you can't figure it out, have them close. Because the minute you can stick your shit in, it's a lot, lot shorter distance from... From here, then here. That extra split second gives him gives him a chance to either sit on it, just bring his chest down and shut it down. So I always keep my keep my legs close. I was gonna try to say something funny about your enemies closer, but I don't know if I can figure it out. <laughs> keep your legs close and something else closer, but I don't know what that is. So I want him on my shoulders. I'm gonna arch out. And as he's up, I'm going to bring in, tap, an arm lock. Now, if he decides to pull out, I'm going to make sure he cannot pull out all the way. And I have a choice now. Usually, I'm just going to bring my hips up, lean down, and say hello to my little feet. Even if, guys, if you can get a hold of this, great. If you can, just squeeze. Okay. So again, he's up high on my shoulders. One pump. Tap. And we have a submission. We have a lift off. So, guys, do we have any questions on these uh, unorthodox escapes before we move move on? Guys, again, be careful. Don't bait bottom of cross side to get one of these moves. This is, if the opportunity is there, take it. But if it's, don't bait it because, you, and, you know, then somebody's going to really, you know, knows what they're doing and they're going to keep switching their hands and you're going to be chasing them. And you're like, oh man, Fox said I could submit somebody from the bottom. Yes, you can if the opportunity is there. But if you said, if you like, baiting people into this and then you got somebody really good on top of cross side it's going to be a long day for you Hollywood Blue Jitsu says uh, keep your enemies close and your knees closer oh I like that oh yeah and Michael Frizzi says uh, you make it look so easy yeah I've been training for a long time <laughs> and I've been training every single day for the last 80, 85 days. 
how you train every single day normally just sometimes it's just in the water for recovery let's move on now so now we're, we're gonna go to so MMA style is is this so you have to the question is is are his hips down or are their hips up so I always want to try to swim you got to swim guys the good news is if the guy is his hands are on your biceps he's not punching you all right if he's punching I'm moving okay so if he's stalling you out what I'm trying to do is bump my hips up notice that if he's driving his weight is on my arms okay if I bump him up I can swim now you may not be able to swim both hands at the same time, but I'm doing both. I, whichever one happens, but, and I'm going after him now. Yeah, now he's, he's done. Now let's look at the other possibility where he's driving and his hips are in the air. So notice, guys, when, he, when his hips were down, again... I can get the weight off a little bit. Now, the, the difference is, we're doing good. Is this good? Yeah, I think. I can put my foot on the hip. Guys, if I can put my foot on the hip, I can, I can, I can manipulate him. So don't let me get my foot on the hip. And here we go. You got to move, guys. You have to move. You cannot let somebody make you mobile. You gotta figure out what you can move. And ideally, if you can move a couple of parts of your body at the same time, there will be an opening. Jim Taylor is asking, are there any sweeps from the Brawley Inverted Triangle? Yeah, it's all the same sweeps. If he goes north, south, you can launch him. You gotta go to the Inverted Triangle uh, episode, I don't know which one it is, but uh, if I have somebody trying to, I'm going to try to finish them first before I sweep them. Sweep is only a backup option. And Michael Frazier is asking, can you talk about the balance between looking for what the opponent gives you versus training chain attacks by position? Uh, there, I don't consider them versus like you do one or the other. I, I, I look at it as you doing both at the same time. So basically, I attack, and I either hit him, he's done, I submit him, or he escapes, in which case he's giving me something else. So I gotta keep stringing. So basically, my you, you whatever position you're in, you ha I have a plan. Rarely does that plan go exactly according to plan um, if you have a skilled opponent. So I have to have a backup plan and possibly a backup plan to the backup plan. Uh, now, the, the hard part becomes, and that's why I told you guys that you need to look for things in transitions, is when you get stalled. So now you don't have a plan. You wait. Your plan is to wait for him. That's not a good plan. We use a lot of plan. <laughs> a lot of words. A lot of plan. A lot of plan. <laughs> so when for you guys so uh, based out a little bit more a little wider a little wider like you know like a, a, a wrestler in MMA did you know yeah 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 so guys it depends uh, what what the like right now I'm stalled out all right if I can put my, so you have to break it down. You're immobilized. Not really. Your upper body is, is pinned, but you're not immobilized. So guys, don't drop both. If you drop both, you, you're done. So I'm not immobilized. I can put, I can put my foot on the hip. But I, I gotta, you gotta make sure that the second, the split second, he decides to punch you. I'm already moving. Okay, so drive again. So if I can put my foot on the hip, so 
Yeah, my upper body is immobilized, but I can look. You always gotta hang, no matter what you're doing. You always gotta hang with the other leg. Okay, so there's two ways. There's guys that kind of drive with wide base. What Enrique was doing, he was trying to drive with a narrower base, which is basically, he's trying to prevent my hips from moving, and because his hips are closer, I cannot put my foot on the, I cannot put my foot on, the, on his hips. So this is, most MMA guys would not be doing this. What he's trying to do is, I cannot put my foot on the hip. It's just, by the time I do, his knees are so close, he's gonna be driving through, okay? So again, maybe this is not quite as, this This is, I could do this, you know? But control my hips. Yeah, this is actually worse for me, believe it or not, all right? So I realized that I cannot use my legs right now. My biggest, guys, again, you gotta prioritize. Everything in life, you have to prioritize. Everything. Do you go to supermarket to buy food? Or you want to watch the show? Although if you have a DVR, you can, you can do both. Watch the show. <laughs> Priority. Uh, so everything you prioritize. Same thing in jiu-jitsu. You just got to prioritize very, very quickly while you're under duress. So that's why jiu-jitsu is such a good life lesson. So I know that I cannot you move my legs because if I do your guard will be passed very quickly so the only thing I can do is is move my arms now I can move my legs <laughs> this was a thing of beauty guys So again, the idea is break the problem up. What is your most important problem? If you are under a threat of a submission, you don't worry about your position unless the changing your position is so easy that it'll get you out of that threat of submission. But if you're under, if he's controlling you and he's threatening a, a submission, you have to deal with the submission first. Okay. Now. If you sort of quasi neutral, although in MMA this is not neutral, he's he's better off. Okay. So in this point, he stalled you out. He stalled out your game. He's either looking for self defense. He's he he he's either looking to for that beautiful opportunity when you make a mistake and he can, he can hit you with an elbow or with a fist, um, or he's basically just stalling you out and hoping that the ref will stand you up. So you have to do something fast. If you can put your foot under his hips, I would do that first, stretch him out and attack. Stretch him out or pivot. If you cannot put, if basically he's controlling your hips, so your hips, you lose your hip mobility. And also you lose the distance to put your foot on the hip. You know, do not move your hips. Now you have to move your arms. When you move your arms up, you bump up your hips, now his weight comes off a little bit off the front, and also by doing so, you create a little bit of distance, so now you can put your foot on the hips or you can pivot. Does that make a lot of sense, guys? And one last question before we close out. Adolfo Ferrand is asking, Fox, I sometimes end up with the inverted triangle on top and my triangle may not feel tight. Do you just drop to your side to adjust or move on to something else? If I can adjust, it depends, like, uh, if you land in a position where you can adjust, uh, by all means adjust because it's it's a it's a valuable grip. But if you can't, and you know your legs are starting to burn out or coming apart, just take the top position and and you know, go after him with something else. You know that, that accomplished its goal, which is again to either it's a form of control which leads to you know your uh, to a submission or some form of sweep. And just like that, we're out of time, guys. Like, share, subscribe, tag, friend, follow, follow uh, stalk, watch the previous episode. <laughs> <laughs> stalk. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, that's it. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow <laughs> for episode 86, 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. Guys, stay well and be consistent.